Mm, yeah. I love my HBCU. And boy, boy, I love it, love it. Yeah. I love it, love it. Yeah, yeah. I love my HBCU. Yeah. And man, yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Mm, yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the HCCU Sports Lab to see if my team wanna lose. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, she tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with the hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna lose. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor uh, Yes Sir yes, and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. Welcome in to Dr. Bill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Charles Bishop here. Wilton Jackson on my right, AD Drew on my left. And for a change, we have the Dean who's on assignment today. So I'll be uh, captain in the ship, if you will. Wilton, how you doing, good brother? I am doing pretty good, Charles. Glad to be here. What about you? Uh, pretty good. It was another exciting week of uh, football action in and around uh, HBCU athletics. AD Drew, what's going on, good brother? Man, uh, preparing to get this sprint on, man. Yeah, <laughs> you know, got, yeah. Got a tropical storm, Helene, getting ready to come through this area where I live at, and I'm already. I was already going through stuff anyway at the house, trying to uh, pack up some stuff and everything like that. But I'm gonna be. I already got a, almost got a full tank of gas. I had a full tank of gas, mm -hmm. but you know, but you know, brother had to go run around. And run around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I but I am that. above three quarters. There you go. I'm there you go. I'm That's above a good three thing. Quarters. So, so I, I, I could get out. I could get down and you know, because gas probably gonna jump up to about four, five dollars when this oh, storm yeah. come yeah. And, yeah. And, and and everything else. Uh, and uh, I just want to uh, just need to do this public service announcement. Well, all of the fans of the Black College Sports Network, uh, we looked at it. We realized it today uh, talking. This storm actually affects everybody who does any type of production mm. for the Black College Sports Network. So should the Black College Sports Network go down? Now you know why. Uh, for Brian, to myself, to Roy, to Bell, to everybody who pushes the buttons here at the Black College Sports Network it is potentially in the path of this storm. No doubt. And I mean, we will be definitely in prayer for you guys because honestly, it is a way of life for us here in the South. Hurricane pre preparedness, uh, basically from June all the way through October. Late October now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So this is the state of affairs. I believe in climate change. I don't know about anybody else, but that's a whole <laughs> political topic. Welcome to episode 552 of Inside the HBCU Sports Lab radio show and podcast. The show that's covering the sport in the HBCU diaspora. All things HBCU sports with institutions large and small from the NAIA to the NCAA. We share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture and HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs and the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Charles Bishop, along with my co-host, Wilton Jackson and A.D. Drew tonight. Uh, Mike Washington on assignment. Dr. Cavill is on assignment. We're filming from our home studios and sending a signal live to our KCOH 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Famer, the great Ralph Cooper in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. And AD, you started things off, man. We're gonna get into some uh, news and notes, but you're talking about Tropical Storm Helene. Uh, it has postponed uh, the FAMU football game versus Alabama A&M, and this comes to us from HBC Game Day. Uh, Florida A&M, Florida a &M University Athletics announced today that the football team's upcoming game against Alabama A&M, initially scheduled for this weekend, has been rescheduled due to the impending arrival of Tropical Storm Helene. The game will now occur on Friday, November 29th at Ken Riley Field at Bragg Memorial Stadium with the safety of the university community at the forefront. Acting Athletics Director Michael Smith emphasized the importance of taking necessary precautions. Huge news because now we have a SWAC East game that has been postponed until what could be the real thick of things, you're talking about Friday post-Thanksgiving, 
in November. Uh, Wilton, your thoughts? Uh, I look at this and I said to myself, let me take a look at this schedule because uh, <laughs> fam, you has Mississippi Valley, November 16th, but don't cook me. Of course, everybody, Florida Classic, November 23rd, and then you get Alabama and m and that's on a short week, on a Friday. Short week, short week. So it's short just week. like anything can happen. Granted, you know, right now on September, whatever it is, September 24th, we're not necessarily saying that Alabama and m is a big threat to win the Swag East. I know I'm not, but, you know, <laughs> every team that every team that potentially <laughs> wants to be competing in November is is essentially going to be playing well, or you hope they're going to be playing well in November. So, uh, if they are playing like well and and they're giving you know those those you know that rhythm or whatever, um, it could be interesting. Mm, Connell Mater just texted me, "Who's that kid up there?" Never mind. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm just having fun. I'm just having fun. Brother <laughs> Drew, brother Drew, what are your thoughts, man? Uh, well, obviously, you know, I live in the uh, Tallahassee area, uh, about an hour from Tallahassee, so uh, definitely understand the concern as a lot of schools have uh, decided to cancel classes uh, yeah, as early as tomorrow to allow people to uh, travel out of the way of the storms. But just want to give you guys a couple of other games that you need to keep an eye out on and, uh, that may be affected due to weather from this uh, potential storm. Kentucky State travels to Albany State on mm. – on Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, Tuskegee travels to Edward Waters. Depending on the path of this storm, the Jacksonville area could be affected by this uh, by this particular. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, go ahead. No, go I'm ahead. Start taking a look at some of uh, of the map of where that hurricane is traveling. You see how many more games are affected. Go ahead, Eddie. Yeah, uh, Benedict travels to Morehouse is another game that could that could be affected. Uh, I'm, I'm just going right down the schedule. It's right coming right up. It's going to hit through Atlanta. Just depends on which side of I seventy five that this storm winds up uh, going on. Right. right. Uh, nothing really in the CIAA should be affected. Looking at the uh, MEAC schedule, nothing in the MEAC should be affected. Uh, we, we've already talked about uh, Florida A and M hosting Alabama State. Poss I mean, Alabama a and possibly Bethune hosting Alabama State, possibly, mm -hmm. yeah. because Alabama State may not be able to travel there because mm -hmm. of, the, you know, the storm may wind up going a little bit west and affect them in Montgomery, or the roads may be too bad for them to travel to uh, Daytona. Those look like the uh, key games that we need to keep an eye out on for potential news about uh, cancellations and or postponements. No doubt about it. A lot of uh, decisions will have to be made here in the next couple of days in regards to those games. Uh, we take a look at some more news and notes around uh, HBC Sports National News. A.D. Drew, David Wright, man. Uh, Clark is the, the talk of the HBC environment. Big news with regards to uh, David Wright. Be, be, before you say David Wright in my presence on any podcast, you must start <laughs> with Yes, you were right. You told us so two years ago. <laughs> when he was at Allen. <laughs> I mean, when he was at when he was at Allen, I told yeah. you two years ago this kid this kid was going to be special. And thank thanks to him, he has proven me right. I get a lot of stuff wrong, but I'm glad I got this one right. V pun very much intended on that one. Mm. Anyway, uh David Wright, along with Sean Johnson. Uh, Morehouse, uh, Leonardo Cabrera of Clark Atlanta, who, by the way, hit the what game winning, game -winning field goal 55 field goal, yard, 55 55 yard. yard. That would have been good from about 61. Mm. And uh, Malachi Jones have been able to recognize as uh, players of the week by the SIAC. We're not even going to talk about David Wright, we already knew what he did 374 for a touchdown, 40 for. 30 for 49 on, on completions in the comeback victory against uh, FCS Bethune Cookman. Cookman. Uh, how about Sean Jones from Morehouse, the linebacker who, uh, excuse me, the defensive, in, defensive back from Morehouse, 12 tackles, 2.5 tackles for loss, and a sack as Morehouse got their first victory against somebody not named Clark Atlanta. In the last three years, that's it. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
You saw, you saw the correlation, right? Yeah, I, correlation. Yeah, I, I noticed. I said, you're, you're building it up. That's a teaser. <laughs> I like that. All right. Uh, obviously, we talked about uh, the fre freshman kicker, uh, Leonardo Cabrera, with the 55-yarder uh, to win the game. And last but not least, Malachi Jones had a monster game as the newcomer of the week. As uh, Benedict defeated Edward Waters, 31-28, uh, caught four passes, 88 yards, and three three times he hit pay dirt, including the game winner with, for eight yards. With no time left on the clock, we're not going to get into the controversy of that game. We have spent enough podcasts <laughs> talking about how long that game was and the timing issues and the officiating uh, questions in that particular ball game. We are not going to get into that for the sake of time, gentlemen. Uh, smart move because I think we were all tired and sleepy uh, last <laughs> Thursday in regards to that game. Wilton, you got some swag weekly honors for me. Yes, I do. The swag tab, Bethune, Cookman's Cameron Ransom, Grambling State's Brendan Barley, Florida NM's Cameron Gillis, and Texas Southern's Quintel Quinn for swag football weekly honors this week. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, Ransom was pretty impressive. On his third start, he went 22 of 31 for 382 yards and three touchdowns. Um, he rushed for 11. Uh, he rushed 11 times, excuse me, for 105 yards and a touchdown. Um, on the defensive side, you got Barley tallied a, a nation-leading third interception of the season against uh, for Grambling against Jackson State. We all watched that game, and boy, was it a game! Mm. Uh, he has made an interception in each of Grambling's past three games and contributed seven tackles for four solo stops against JSU. Uh, from a special team standpoint, Gillis went four for four in field goal attempts for FAMU during the non-conference outing against Troy. Uh, he converted four, uh, field goals of 22, 29, 31, and 43, uh, totaling 12 points for FAMU. Um, and then also the newcomer in Quinn led Texas Southern with 149 rushing yards on 23 carries at Lamar in his first career start. He averaged about six and a half yards uh, per rushing attempt with a long run of about 37 yards. There you have it. Uh, I see the uh, Gremlin contingent. They are in the uh, chat. Uh, oh, yeah. I see Lennon Blow is giving uh, North Carolina a t some some pure hell in the chat. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Giving Alabama a and some. Uh, this is going to be fun, man. But I tell you what, we'll take a break. We'll get into our mid-major poll. We'll take a look and see what Doc is seeing with the mid-majors. We'll be right back here on Inside the HBC Sports Lab in a second. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. Supermarket sushi, really? No. Wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? Oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> never not working. Never not working. Never ever not working. Are you serious? Never not working. Dandruff protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. Hey, grab me one, too. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll it back, everybody. <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? This is the Dean of the College of HBC. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot of love, and who the ball, who the ball. 
So listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, And pay attention what? Cause he gonna teach a lesson yes. Welcome back to Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Flanking me in the backfield tonight, Wilton Jackson and A.D. Drew. And hey, Charles. Hey, Charles. Yo. I, I forgot to mention when I was doing all that stuff with uh, David Wright, I forgot to mention the uh, ESPN helmet sticker that he earned. Man, he did get an ESPN helmet. Yeah, he did. I, really, I, I don't sticker. know how I forgot that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Shame on you for the same guy who told everybody that David Wright was the man. You forgot his helmet sticker. <laughs> My bad. And uh, Emmett Jones got a question in the chat for you. I'm not going to put it on the screen, but take a look at it when you get what a chance. Was the, what, what was the question? Tell, tell me what the question was. Emmett? Why is TC playing McCoy Ooh. over Jacoby Morgan? Especially <laughs> after- <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, boy. Emmett, you're like, I'm on the coaching staff. Like, what, 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 I can't answer that question. You, you relate a question to who needs to be asked a question. So, I like that. Good stuff, Evan. Let's take a look at the Miss Major <laughs> poll this week, what Doc has in store for us. AD, if you could pull it up. Uh, dropping out this week. Oh, my God. Virginia State Trojans and the, and the Virginia Union. But when has that happened? I have never seen this before in my time here on Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Virginia State Somebody Andrew. please screenshot this. I know. You got to screenshot Real. this. Virginia State. <laughs> this, 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 won't, this shouldn't last. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Virginia State of Virginia, you both drop out this week. Receiving votes, actually, uh, would be Virginia State uh, and Virginia Union. Interesting enough, dropping out, but they also receive votes. Yeah, look at here, the old Texas kind of steers. They, another screenshot opportunity. Yeah, another screenshot opportunity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's work, start from the bottom and work our way up. Coming in at number seven, they're one and one and one on the season floor Memorial Lions. Tapping in at number six, check them out, the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. They went ham this weekend, putting up 57 points and a big win over West Liberty. They check in at number six. Number five team, Fayetteville State Broncos. Nice win for Fayetteville State. 31-7 over Elizabeth City State this past weekend. Uh, Big win for them. They check in at number five. Checking in at number four, Uh uh-oh. It is the Shaw Bears coming in at three and one. Shaw, big win over Lincoln this past weekend, 48 to 14. Dr. Veal has them slotted in at number four. Let's see who the top three are. I think I got an idea. Winston Salem State, they check in at number three at three and one. One and oh in conference play. Uh, nice win, big win over Virginia State this past weekend, 15 to 14. Look at, look at the Winston Salem State Rams, they did. Making some moves. They're interesting. Here we go. Top two. Checking in. Number two. It is the Clark Atlanta Panthers. Undefeated on the season three. And 0 2 and 0 in conference play. Big win over Swack Bowl Bethune Cookman this past weekend. And the number one team in Dr. Field's mid major poll, the Johnson C. Smith Golden Bulls. 4 and 0 on the season. Huge win. President, anytime the president got to come down and, and do a fireside chat with you, that's a big win. <laughs> Four and zero on the season, big win over Virginia Union. Guys, what are your thoughts on Doctor Cavill's poll? Wilson, we'll start with you, bro. You know, I, I'm I'm okay with it. Uh, I'm okay with Florida Memorial at seven. A uh, little shot by West Virginia State, but I'm okay with that too. Fayetteville State, I'm okay. When I look at Shaw. Just yeah. knowing when, when where they were predicted to start the season and they're three and one, I'm like, okay, you know, is this a moment where you know we take a screenshot to say that they're maybe could or could not be here, or is this for real? You know, and I think obviously as the season continues to unfold, we'll find that out somewhere. Stephen Gaither is very excited. Yeah, Winston Salem is in yeah. number three. Yeah, and I'm not like, as a person who who I didn't get a chance to watch every moment of this game, but I was glad to see them get that victory. That was a big win. It was it was a huge win. I did not see it for them. Yeah, I I thought Virginia State would would get that one. That's a big win on the road. Uh, Winston Salem State proving they are for real. And every Winston Salem State grad that you know, they are that chest is a little bigger. They got to get a wider coat this week. A Superman test. Yeah, Superman. Look like they got a bulletproof vest on or something. Yeah, yeah, oh, yes. man. Ram Pride is in effect this this week. Yes. And then 
Number I mean, two. It, and then with Clark Atlanta, I think, you know, it just goes without saying what a, an incredible job Coach Keaton is doing with the program. We can't say enough superlatives about David Wright. Uh, he's the real deal. Mm. You know, I've only been on the show for a couple of months. So, A.D., I didn't I, I wasn't I wasn't uh, privy to hear you talk about him two years ago. But I'll say this. The guys, he, he he's the real deal. And for them to get a win like that against Bethune Cook, when I was talking with Tyler on HBCU game day last week, we were talking about with that game solidify some things with Clark Atlanta in terms of giving them more value on their season. I definitely think this win does, and I'm I'm very, very, very excited, very excited to see what they continue to do in their season. So, well, let me ask this question. You think Teddy Keaton Saturday night sometime got a little text from uh, XYZ Booster? Hey, congratulations, Coach. Just oh, to say yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, no, no, he definitely got time. He got something for sure. Got it. As soon as the game was over. With the pad tip. <laughs> <laughs> with the look, with the, hey, we hear you about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You AD, your thoughts on the top seven, bro. All right. And, and this pains me to say as somebody who has spent most of his career in the SIAC, but thank God for Clark Atlanta mm. because the SIAC would not be anywhere in this poll, not only are they, were no, no one else in the top seven, but no one else is even in the receiving votes category, except mm. for Clark Atlanta out of the SIAC. That hurts me as an SIAC fan, apologist, and everything else associated with the SIAC. Now, let's go to Clark Atlanta and Johnson C. Smith. Yes, sir. All right. Here's the debate. Because we have not seen this. There are people who have not seen a tie in their lifetime when it comes to college football. I, Charles, you and I have not seen this since we were going to frat parties and whatever other kind of parties we were at our respective colleges, 1995. Okay. Which I'm curious is, do the voters really – know how to value or devalue a tie anymore because you've got a Clark Atlanta team who has beaten two Division II opponents and an FCS opponent. Mm. But they tied to an NAIA opponent. So, you know, is that, and I'm just asking the question out loud, is that really better then Johnson C. Smith, who defeated, who's defeated a winless Tuskegee team, a Morehouse team who just got their first victory. Yeah. You know, and, and, as you go through Johnson C.'s schedule, I, I I'm just asking the question. I agree. I agree with where it looks at what it looks like on paper right now. I totally agree with it. But I have to put this out here for conversation pieces. Mm. Who really has had the better schedule? Because Clark Atlanta tied with our number 17. So that should give you some value to that tie. But no, but that was a rain induced. That was a weather. Induced but tie. I can say it, it was a rain induced tie. But the fact that the score was tied, it, it regardless how it is, it goes. In 20 years, you won't remember that it was rain and deuce. It would just be a tie. The fact mm -hmm. that they, they're tied with a team who was in the top seven when, when the tie occurred, mm -hmm. which also brings, should we be giving Florida Memorial a little more of respect because mm -hmm. they tied against probably the, the, the arguably one of the top two teams in this, in this category. Mm -hmm. Other, other the uh, Winston Salem, right, right where I think they should right, should be. Shaw, uh, see a little questions about the strength of their schedule. Uh, I, I personally had West Virginia State ahead of Fayetteville because I think West Virginia State, despite playing one fewer, uh, where they actually have played the same amount of games, West Virginia State has played a little bit slightly tougher competition with their 2 and one versus Fayetteville State, plus the fact that Fayetteville State got shut out in their one game. West Virginia State lost by, lost by a large margin, but they uh, they scored. Mm -hmm. So I had to put West Virginia State ahead of Fayetteville State. Now, the question is, and we'll talk about this uh, at the end of it, will the Virginia schools get redemption this weekend? Because they have the opportunity to get some redemption. 
but this is not going to be easy competition. Or are we looking at the South rising? Mm, that is a great question. Are we looking at the South rising? That is that is an interesting look. See, uh, let me ask because nobody because no uh, and the reason I say that because nobody we talk about the SIAC not being on the schedule. Nobody from the North is on this uh, ranking either. Yeah, I was about to say nobody from from the North. Uh, you because we've gotten used to seeing the Bowie states. You was used to seeing Virginia Union. That, and, and like you said, take a snapshot. I mean, yeah. Johnson C. Smith, number one, Clark. Clark? Yeah, that, yeah. Clark? I'm Clark still getting used two. to it. I'm, I'm happy, <laughs> but I'm getting used to it. Yes, indeed. So uh, that's very interesting. Uh, do, uh, help me out with this, A.D. Put this Johnson C. Smith win in context. They held down uh, probably one of the top running backs in all of HBC football and Jada Byers to under 50 yards. That was a hell of a win. There's nothing that you can say about that particular game when, when you're going through and doing this. That game is ultimate respect. Uh, they came in, Johnson C, and did exactly what they needed to do. Because it, it, And if you're going to beat Union, you got to stop that run game. Mm. There's, there's no if ands, or buts about it. And I want to flip over to the other Virginia team who basically didn't did not perform. That's the best way I could put it. They did not perform in that particular ball game against Winston State. Uh, Winston Salem. Now, was that Winston Salem dominance, or was that Virginia State's lack of performance? I, I still need another. I still need another data point for both of them to really see it. It, it has, <laughs> has the trend shifted. Jump in, Wilson. Jump in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear everything you saying, and I, again, I, I like to give disclaimers. I'm not gonna pretend like I've watched every single Winston Salem State game or or Virginia State game, but I really think in that game of what I saw, I think that was more of a situation of Winston Salem State strengthening its muscle mm. and, and making the stops and making and the adjustments that they needed to win that game. Again, I cannot say that they are the biggest favorite to win the conference. However, in that game specifically. I think it was more of them versus Virginia State. Interesting dialogue. I mean, that was that was a. I had two sort of neck snap moments this weekend when I saw the the the, the Winston Salem State score, and the same thing when I saw the Johnson Z Smith score. Uh, on the other side of the break, we'll talk about what we saw on the major side as far as neck snaps. But you know, I, that, those were two games that really caught my eye. I was like. Wow. And then I pivot to I wonder what the polls are going to say. And then, of course, the, you know, the one that everybody kind of looked at their phone twice was like, wait a second. I know when I was following that game, but then it was all on top of Clark. And then all of a sudden I see this 55 yard field goal uh, flying through the air and pandemonium. Shout out to Clark Atlanta Panthers. You're talking about a football program that had been down and Clark and Johnson C. Smith, they are the talk of the town right now. Yeah. Uh, I, I hate to throw this in, but my uh, my next snap moment was not around HBCU football. When somebody told me James Madison was blowing North Carolina out, that was my next snap moment. That was, that the was, first was another next snap. That was another yeah. next snap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I, I happened to be in attendance for the other next snap was just – Seeing uh, the Hail Mary from Shador, that was crazy to be a part of that pandemonium. But didn't, uh, it, didn't it remind you of something you saw at Jackson? Uh, I, I made I, I asked the question in the post game. I said, "Was there a deja vu moment?" Because we've seen this in the Celebration Bowl, and you know, the national media was kind of looking like, what, what, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, I was like, "Yeah, this happened in the Celebration Bowl." Uh, Shador with a, 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 a last second heave that found. Pay dirt to send the game into overtime. So a little bit of deja vu moment for this uh, past weekend. Great football all around. Great commentary, okay. fellas. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's take a quick break here on Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. We'll take a look at upcoming games this week, and we'll take a quick look back at Dr. Ville's poll from this past Sunday. We'll take a look at the major uh, division, and we'll talk about that a little bit, and we'll get into some more football action here on Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Hey, grab me one, too. Ryan Fulford. 
A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app. As we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture, including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dash, as well as the upcoming week of HBCU sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. Royce Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You could be a free hot breakfast hero at a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! Mr. This Script got a plot twist at a Radisson Hotel. A business big leaguer. Go for key. Even the ultimate pool float inflator. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Book direct at choicehotels.com, where travels come true. Got to get the corners. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU athletics, there's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show, exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot left. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. Welcome back here to Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Charles Bishop here. Wilton Jackson and A.D. Drew, they will flank me in the backfield for tonight's episode. Uh, let's take a quick look back. This past Sunday, Dr. Bill dropped his major poll, and uh, we'll take a look at the seven through one. Uh, Howard comes in at number seven. <clears throat> Jackson State drops in the poll to number six. Morgan State with the Dusty Rose elbow to Virginia Lynchburg, 56 to seven. They come in at number five. Ugh. North Carolina Central, 66 points over North Carolina Ames. <laughs> they come in at number four. <laughs> Fam, you, they hang tough with Troy, uh, but they eventually drop that game to Troy, but they come in at number three. The grandma, the G-Man. I saw y'all in the chat. Big win over Jack State this past weekend. They check in at number two. And Hampton. They check in at number one for this week in Dr. Bill's poll. SIDs, take a good look. Make sure you uh, put this in your game notes, your programs, in terms of Dr. Bill's poll for this upcoming week. But interesting slate of games. Uh, and we can start from the bottom to the top. Uh, I don't know what it is, what the Hulu, Huju, Hampton has over Howard, but Howard just cannot overcome them. That was a big win, I think, for the Hampton Pirates and that fan base. They get to carry the mantle of another year of being a real H.E. Wilt. No, they do. And, it, and believe it or not, it kind of still played out like it, how you thought it would be a close game. Um, and, and, and literally, like you said, you couldn't have said it better. And Hampton just has Howard's numbers. You talk about the rushing attack. You, you talk about what they were able to do in that game. And, like, they just they, they were able to have more plays and to be able to get that win. And so – you know, I know a lot of people from Howard, and they were hyped for this game. And when they saw that final score, they was like, man, like, we lost to Hampton again. Again. You know? Again. And so, like, it just it, – but what it does, though, and it makes me think about, you know, obviously Hampton not in the MEAC anymore in the CAA. Uh, I guess I, I just – I still been going back and forth and looking at, like, how how – how dominant can they be going forward? Obviously, I don't expect them to make a whole bunch of noise in the CAA, but like, how much does this win make them better? How how bad is this loss for Howard? So before conference play, get your jollies in now if you're a Hampton Parrot. Hi, Andy. Hmm? Exactly, exactly. Hmm. You know, uh, I don't know what it is that uh, Hampton has over the Theological Institute Bison. 
Uh, for those who don't know, that's what Howard was uh, originally founded as. Uh, we, can, we cannot call them that by that name during the week before or the week after if they lose again. So for, for the remainder of this week, there will be the uh, Theological Institute Vice. Mm. I don't know what they have over them, mm -hmm. but whatever it is, you know, it's kind of like, and, I, and I'll make this person, it's kind of like, what Tuskegee has done to Morehouse over the years, they call it a classic, but is it really a classic? Is it really a rivalry when it is so one-sided? Right. Yeah. Especially in, I mean, um, Wilton, you're the youngest one on this uh on this panel right here. You know, we count the number of times that Hampton has lost in your lifetime, mm -hmm. let alone mine and Charles's lifetime. Mm -hmm. Now. I want to look at these first four teams on this uh, poll because because the uh, because the bottom three, I, I mean it, it, it's really like pick your poison. I mean, Morgan's got two wins, but one of them's over doggone Lynchburg. I mean, what 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 is that? What is that? You the Christian the Christian school gets more hate than everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, 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 and Jackson State uh, Theological Institute. Well, I can call him Howard now because I'm not talking about Hampton. But they, one of their two victories are against the D2. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the people who aren't in the poll, everybody has victories against D2s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody has bad losses to FCSs. Mm -hmm. So now let's look at these first four. All four of them have two victories against like-level competition, against FCS competition. Mm -hmm. So do you weigh the Division II victories by Hampton and Grambling more than you weigh the Division II, I mean, the FCS, FBS losses by Florida a and Just something, that, something I had to think about when I was making, uh, when I was making my uh, vote. Oh, that sounded so rattlery. Oh. <laughs> but, but, it, but it's true. And yep. then the way that Central lost the, those two games in the middle, how, how was I supposed to? How was I supposed to rate that? Now I'm gonna switch you. This is this is exactly how I rated it, but I I seriously had to think about it. You know, do I really give them credit for those two Division two victories? And if I am gonna give them credit, let's be real. Hampton defeated the better Division two team. Mm. But Hampton and Grant. Let, let me take a look at a couple of matchups here here from the top seven. Uh, I want to talk about Grandma Jackson State. Uh, two v six here. Jackson State six turnovers in this game. Wilton, from your perspective, where did things get askew for the Tigers? That second half. Mm -hmm. uh, that second half. Well, really, yeah, yeah. That second half. Second half, but then also when Cam McCoy went down. And for me, when I saw that he went down, I said to myself, it's only going to be so many more times that Jacoby and Morgan is going to be able to play Superman when, when McCoy goes down. Mm. And, and with that, it's like, and I say that because while obviously Jacoby has had starter experience, anytime you plan to be the starter, your mindset is totally different going into the game. Mm -hmm. When you have to come in and back up with somebody, obviously you still want to win the game, but the mindset is different. You're thrown into fire. And I'm sure Jacoby, he did all the right things. Coaches, you know, prepped him. Uh, for this particular game. But when you look at a Gramlin secondary that the previous week for, if I'm not mistaken, for six turnovers against Texas A&M Commerce. Yeah. So you knew the secondary was going to be strong anyway. So yeah. if, you, if you're Jacoby, I'm thinking like, man, the one thing I don't want to do is turn the ball over. You get one touchdown and then what was next? Yeah. A turnover. Yeah. You know, so, so I, I think more so of that, it was more so of Gramlin secondary being really strong. But then too, Jackson State missed some opportunities late in, I mean, uh, deep down in their end zone where they fumbled the ball, you know, having turnovers and stuff. And I'm thinking, like, this is very uncharacteristic for them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and I, it begs the question, is it the Grambling defense? I mean, they're turning over teams at record margins, uh, playing tremendous uh, football when you take a look at what they're doing, or was it Jackson State making mistakes? But kudos go to the victor. Grambling, big win over Jackson State, 19,000 people down there. And they did what they had to do. They turned Jackson State over, turned those points, uh, turned those turnovers into touchdowns. So, I mean, 
this is going to be a very interesting matchup taking on a very wounded Prairie View in the State Fair Classic this upcoming uh, weekend. Another game. AD, let me ask you about this. And I'm, I, I've pushed the panic button now for North Carolina NT. Uh, but they gave up 66 points to a rival. Uh, what do you make of North Carolina A&T's program right now? Because I thought rock bottom was somewhere, but this was really rock bottom for me, just as an outsider taking a look at where A&T was to where they are now. I'm going to pull out a phrase I have not used all football season. Miakish. A&T, come on back home. Come on home to the Miak. Because, you know, I, 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 I don't know what, what it is about about them in the CAA. Now they're recruiting, trying to, to compete in the CAA, which is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to recruit to compete to win your conference. So now they're going back against former MEAC rivals and the style of play that they have for, against the MEAC school is not working. Let's, let's, let's remember, the last two years, in those crossover matchups between the MEAC and the CAA, the MEAC has has had a winning record. Mm. That's why I say it's MEAC-ish. You know, mm. the MEAC style. Now, this year, it's, it's, it's kind of flipped back over uh, advantage CAA. But, you know, that, that, that style to be the central, the A&T now wants, has to use to compete in the CAA, which they are not doing very well, by the way, mm. you know. Is not working. So, A and T, come on home, baby. Come on home. We we we, we miss you over here. Hey, can I throw something in about uh about the swag? Yeah, go for it. We've seen in the East the last three years the dominance of the East team. Could we be seeing that with Grambling? Where Grambling could potentially have everything sold up. In October, it becomes very interesting to kind of talk about because, yeah. and I've said this for a second or two, I just don't think anything will be settled until November. The same way that you saw Southern get beat by Jackson State, turn around the following week and knock off Prairie View. I could very easily see Prairie View knocking off Bramlin next week. I mean, it is that much parity, I believe, in the league this year, but. It does bring up an interesting question. Can Grandma sew things up early? Because uh, if you're Prairie View, this is it's now or never this weekend. So. I, I don't know if Grambling can sew it up early, but I but I know Prairie View can can pretty much get eliminated with another loss. Pretty yeah, much. I mean, they, they, pretty they're much. essentially out of it. And yeah. their first what, loss to take Southern hurt them bad. Yeah. yeah. And what yeah. what what about Alcorn? They went out. They got all these checks. Now they've got to come and play, and I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. What was, was going out getting all those checks really worth it? We gonna find out. Yeah, because uh, I guess the question for me uh, with Alcorn uh, I, I, is, are they settled at the quarterback position? I think you can ask no. a lot of programs no. that same question. So you no, know, not. very interesting. Let's take a quick break. And we'll take a look at this upcoming week's games, some games that you guys got your eyes on, and uh, we'll close this thing out. It's been a fun look back, but let's look <laughs> forward now. We'll be right back here on Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. At Auto Masters LLC, our mission is to serve our community by providing quality automobiles at affordable prices. All of our vehicles are inspected and certified to offer you the confidence in knowing you have a quality vehicle. Our goal is to provide you with a seamless process and positive experience for your automobile purchase. Financing recommendations and specific vehicle inquiries are available at your request. You can find us at www.automasters06.com and like follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Also, please feel free to contact Terrence Miles at 601-927-7794. And oh yeah, tell him Sonia sent you. 
Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You could be a free hot breakfast hero in a comfort hotel. Yes! That's how you waffle! Mr. This Script got a plot twist at a Radisson Hotel. A business big leaguer! Go for key. Even the ultimate pool float inflator! With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Book direct at choicehotels.com, where travels come true. Gotta get the corners. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love yeah. and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, Boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. Yeah. Welcome back to Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Charles Mitchell here with Wilson Jackson and A.D. Drew. Uh, a lot of great football action coming up this week, and we talked about it in the first segment. Uh, weather could be the talk of the town uh, and towards the latter part of the week as we have a tropical storm system coming through what could be Florida, Alabama, Georgia. So uh, tune in on Thursday to see if we have any other cancellations. Uh, we already mentioned that Florida a and has postponed their game with Alabama a and until November 29th. So uh, we'll be taking a look at that. But, you guys, we can go in any direction. A lot of great football action is coming up week. We got Benedict at Morehouse. Bluey State goes down to Winston-Salem State. Uh, we got the State Fair Classic, Prairie View and Gramlin. Do a dive there. Jackson State, they make a trip over to Texas Southern. Texas Southern, much more improved team. Lost last week to Lamar. But they are running the football. They are a physical bunch. Uh, look a little bit different from the previous iterations of Texas Southern. But we'll take it anywhere you want to go. AD, let's start off, bro. What are you taking a look at? Uh, let's see. The fact that the CI, old CIAA South went 4-1 and one against the old CIAA North, I think that is where we need to start. Mm. And let's start off with Fayetteville State, Virginia. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I mean, you know, Virginia State, the team that was picked to win the CIAA mm -hmm. against the team that's always been in the conversation for the last six years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Always in the championship game for the last six years. Yeah. Yeah. So can they eliminate, essentially eliminate Virginia State already, especially when you don't have divisions anymore? Very interesting. Very and, and gotta mention number five ranked Fayetteville State paying a visit to Virginia State. Virginia State trying to get back into the poll. So they got a number number five team uh headed down uh to take on or headed up, I should say, to take on Virginia State. Oh no, that game is down in Fayetteville State. So that'll be uh Virginia State paying a visit to them. So very yeah. interesting looks at. And speaking of Virginia schools, how about Union and Shaw? Ooh. So, there we go. Okay. Same thing. Uh, Wilt asked the question. Is Shaw for real? Yeah. We going to find out, especially with Union coming off of a loss, they will have vengeance on their mind. And Absolutely. hopefully the Shaw Bears will be take the brunt of their anger. That's what, that's what the uh, people in that part of Virginia are hoping for. So that's that's a that's another one, but it only gets better, Charles. Mm. Bowie State wins the same old state. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is I mean, th this will tell us if, if Winston Salem State, state is for real. Yeah. yeah, it will. Yeah, it will. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. Those those are these those are the uh, we, we want to call them sexy sexy matchups. <laughs> that is the that is the beauty pageant right there. Well, here's right the interesting there. part. You called out the sexy matchups. Tell me a winner in those sexy matchups. Let's see, now you guys what you got. Johnson C. Smith over Blue, over Bluefield State. I'm well, calling no, that no, one. I yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, let's see. Let's see. Let me, let, me, let me go ahead and let's see. I've got uh, – let's see. Virginia State is – Virginia State, Virginia Union are at home. Mm -hmm. All the North teams are at home that mm -hmm. I talked about. Mm -hmm. No, Boo, uh, Winston Salem's at home. Winston Salem's at home. Bowie State visits yes. Winston Salem. That's a one o'clock kick. We got yeah. Shaw at Virginia Union, another one o'clock kick, and then we have Fayetteville State at Virginia State. 
Um, I'm going. That is a two o'clock. You know what? We'll save it till Thursday. I'm gonna leave it out. I, 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 I might not be on. Good. I might not be on here Thursday because due to the weather. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and go out there on the limb. Go for it. <laughs> I'm going Fayetteville State over Virginia State. Ooh. I'm going Union over Shaw. Mm-hmm. And I'm going. I'm going Winston Salem at home. So I'm taking two of the three of them at home. You better, because the Ramuley the Ram- the Ram- were going to come after you if you didn't take them to home. It won't be the yeah. first time. <laughs> <laughs> AD got the mid majors. Wilson, I'm going to give you the majors. Who you got uh, looking on that side of the coin? So I'm going to start with the sweat. Um, you know, I was one who had high, high hopes for Bethune Cookman in the beginning of the season. But right now, it ain't looking too good. Like, just mm. keeping it real. So I, I got Alabama State winning that game if that game happens due to – you know, storm implication. But the next two obvious games are for sure. We already talked about them throughout the show. Prairie View and Grambling. Uh, Cameron Peters, Prairie View, are they, can they basically get that win against Grambling? And also a continuation of what Mickey Joseph is doing for, for Grambling. Can they continue a a, a game plan, a, a game style of forcing turnovers into those turnovers? Because like I said, Miles Crawley, he's looking pretty good. Their defense is looking pretty good. If they can find ways to give Cameron Peters problems, we're going to take this 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 game and preview's in a real interesting place going into October. Mm-hmm. And of and, course, go ahead. And no, I was about to say, preview. Let me help you out. Uh, let me play offensive coordinator for a second. Figure out a way to get the ball to Kobe Cabell. I yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, they made mention of it in the in the, in the press conference uh, this past week. Uh, he had a catch for a seven-yard uh, bomb for a touchdown in that game. But every time he touches the ball, something good happens for PV. They got to figure out a way to get the ball in some playmakers' hands. And, yeah, yeah, Kobe Cavill is making plays for, for the Panthers. So you got to figure out a way to stay alive because this is a big one this weekend for the Panthers with Grambling coming into town. Can't say enough about their Grambling defense turning teams over at a record pace. Who else you got, Will? And the last one is the obvious. It's, it's Jackson State and Texas Southern. Uh, Jackson State been coming off a loss, and then, you know, this is a Texas Southern team. They got that win against Preview Week 1 and still kind of trying to bounce back, get that rhythm, uh, you know, for them coming into, you know, what we, what will be a new month of, uh, of, of football for them. So I, this you said it best at the top, Charles. This is not the same Preview team. I mean, this is not the same Texas Southern team we've seen in previous years to this point. And so – if they can make things interesting, or better yet, if they get this win against Jackson State, boy, that that would be big. It would be probably just as big as Graham to get in the win against put, Jackson State. Put your eyes back in your head, y'all. <laughs> <your eyes. laughs> it would be huge. I mean, because when you take a look at it, Texas Southern, they're playing uh, with their third starter now uh, exactly. behind center. He only had 10 attempts this past week. But like I said, this offensive line, they are some road graders, and yep. they – they paved the way for another hundred yard back for uh, t- Texas Southern again. They ran the ball. They were a more physical team in Prairie View and that, and that opening uh, win over Prairie View. So, uh, you know, I-, I know how Jackson State fans can be, but yeah. listen, they better right. come to Houston ready. All right, all right. I'm just saying, <laughs> very interesting game to take a look at. So, State Fair Classic. You went with State Fair Classic and Jackson State and. Uh, Texas Southern. Uh, another interesting to kind of take a look at. Yeah, the old Circle City Classic. Central taking on Norfolk State. This should be an interesting one. Can Walker Harris keep that momentum? You know, that's a rivalry game. You play above your head, you're playing at home, band cooking, and all this good stuff. Now you go on the road against Dawson Odom's team and they does does Otto King come back this weekend? This this is what week five. No, right? this, yeah, week, we, this is week. Yes, he had a four game. Yeah, so yeah, th- yeah he yeah. does come back this week. He, he can to at least anyway. Yeah, he mm. can. Mm. Interesting, interesting. So that's another one that I'm taking a look at. So very interesting game. And, take a look. At, well, go ahead, Eddie. And, and and what did we say was the best scenario for Norfolk with Auto Coons out? Mm. Five hundred. Mm. What, what is Norfolk right now? Two and two. Two and yep. two. Very good point. So that's another good one. So a lot of great games this upcoming week. Hey, guys, you guys have broken it down tremendously. Another great outing here on Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Uh, any final thoughts, AD? Uh, the, just want to pray for everybody within this uh, this, this storm, and, and including myself and my family, that we uh, survived this uh, storm. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's more than a notion. It is more than a notion. Uh, 
but I, and I, I know we're getting ready to go, but I have got to put this question out here for you guys, fellas, and you guys can be brief on it. Is it time for our Division Two conferences, CIAA, SIAC, to mandate replay? To mandate what? Replay. Yeah. Because they've got it at the NAIA level, but we don't yeah. have it in our conferences. No, anytime you can uh, use technology to make the game better, by all means, use it. There is probably no reason nowadays if that that – the technology is not available in, in, in each and every stadium to, to go about the process of having to replace. So uh, very interesting uh, point that you make there. It is time for, uh, to make sure that uh, no stone is left unturned in regards to, to make sure you get the calls right. Well, I agree. I mean, you, you start looking at all other major leagues that have it. And I mean, it's, it's being put to good use to make sure that games are being called fairly and correctly. Uh, not saying that, Technology gets every single thing right, but you stand a better chance of using it to make sure that everything is, is run smoothly and effectively. No doubt about I, it. I, now, I, I just got to play the common point where I know we can really close out. We already had a four-hour and 15-minute game without replay, fellas. I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to just say this. If it's all <laughs> the way on the opposite side of the field and you on TV, <laughs> leave it hanging. Leave it hanging. All right? Wilson, final thoughts, brother. You know, I'm just excited for another week of, of, of good HBCU football. I'm interested to see, like I said, with uh, that Jack State Texas Southern game. I'm also looking to see what happens between um, Grambling and Prairie View. And then also everybody that's like, like uh, Eddie said, everybody's in the path of the storm. Hopefully they all stay safe um, and everything will be okay. No doubt. Uh, prayers to everyone in the path of the storm, of course. Uh, hurricane preparedness uh do what you need to do fill up the tanks uh have your hurricane kit things of that nature but uh uh definitely prayers to all of those uh in the path of the storm great job guys on this tuesday on on this episode uh we look forward to seeing you on thursday here back on inside the hbcu sports lab we should get a little bit more of a clear vision on if there are any other games that might be uh, postponed uh, from this weekend. But you know how we close this thing out. AD! Course. Wilson. Lecture. Dismissed, everybody. <laughs> Travel life. <laughs>